Oh, welcome back. So I'm going to show you how I glue. Now, the heater has been on for a fair while, so it's not cold in here. So the actual glue coming in from the house, I'm working out here, it's not going to be too cold. 30 degrees. And now I use the strong blue tape I've put on the best boy uh, Duncan. I tried the green, but it's, it's like half tack. I need this stuff. So, what I need to do is consider that I don't want anything there, but I want the blade covered. So, if I do that. That should stick really well because it's the the blue is the, the higher uh, adhesion. I actually buy the 3M stuff and I make it as even as I possibly can. And on the other side, I still keep the bit that's got the tiniest amount of acetone on because my fingers were there pressing on the other side. priority is the blade end and then you can't be really clever and, and guess where you're going to stop but I'd much rather definitely have enough there and then peel it back later uh, again this, this is the um, advantage of a workshop mora so I went to strike force with uh, Jasper there uh, and blew a tenor on one of these and this just gets abused to absolute oblivion on a, you know edge of blade in there so, it's a workshop knife Hole's gone through. And these are already pre finished. So I'll show you to the cam again. So I've gone to a 320 wheel and then slightly buffed them so it, it's as finished as can be. And what I'm going to do now is determine where the scales stop and where I want tape going for the rest of the blade so I don't end up with too much adhesive running across the blade. So pin goes in there. Pin goes in there. Shop knife. And then I go like this. Where that line goes to the edge of the tape, from where that line goes to the edge of the tape, and then I should take it apart. Without disrupting the tape on the blade, I want to come this way. So you, if you can see, you ain't quite got it right. You can.
So I'm going to tape the seal top and bottom just to keep it in in place more than anything. So it's it's really well stuck to itself from one side to another. And you've got as crisp a line as you possibly can with the tape. At the moment, there's only one layer, and I could do other things later once this is all set up. But now the prep on here begins, and things like this now don't matter a jot because you've got a neat line there where where it's going to stop. Okay, so whichever you want to do first, the scale or the blade, in terms of keying down. So I'm at this end. I've got my little well dremel. There he is. He's on his last legs. I've got to do the brushes, but so there we go. Just get some form of eye protection because you never know what's gonna fly off it if ever the, the carbide bit. It's gonna, it's gonna be so sharp. It's gonna be unreal. Okay, so. And what you don't want to do is run that into the tape. A nice careful uh, sort of run up against the tape and then the rest of it can be Identify which blank's blank, plus if ever some git nicked it. You gotta take the angles off it now. That's no genuine.
because this is a skeletonized blade um, I don't do anything else to this but if this was a, a flat blade with just holes in I'd actually put a fuller in there on a grinder so I uh, grind a depression in there but because that's there I'm not going to take any more out there's plenty of chance for through glue in that's an opportunity for the glue from one side to transfer across the gaps into the other side so actually glue joins glue as opposed to two separate zones of adhesive that's through gluing of which all these holes give it right so that's that one I don't degrease it yet because I'm making dust with this so if I use that as an idea and I go there I want to know exactly where the blank is because I, I'm when I did this profile on the grinder I made sure I left it too big all right rather than ruin the blank so this here is the limits of the uh, the, the knife handle and that there is where you got a, an opening so I'm now going to go and put two millimeter holes through the, um, the liner into the wood and this one here is already set up look at that thing beauty's having uh, even just an old bench drill just literally set up with one small bit and that's it so, and so if you don't go to the edge I give it, I give it a bit, a bit of leeway where there's a skeletonization and there's something neat so what I do is I do that to both sides and then on a flat lap board, so a piece of formica or if you've got a surface plate, I put the abrasive on that. And then I, I take off all the burrs that have been created by the drill, so that sits flat on the black. So I'll crack on with that, uh, and we'll come back after I've literally just gone like that, remove the burrs on the fiber liner or the G10. Um, obviously, removed all the pencil because graphite doesn't allow much easy bonding because the layers come off um, and then once these are scored down because then once I've used the sandpaper or all the abrasive to get rid of the burrs on the fiber liner I'm actually keying down now the fiber liner from its its glossy manufactured surface so that's going to be scratched up but when you do it don't press down further on one side than another because you'll actually remove a lot of fiber down one end as opposed to another you still want to go only enough to scratch it and you're not actually trying to remove material because you'll end up with a thinner looking red line on one end and another that makes sense so I'll crack on with this last in a bit
camera, but normally it'll be stuck to the rain for me. Um, tap tap. A flat surface ready to go, I got over there. Um, I use these poly pockets, you know the, the punch pockets for A4 pieces of paper? They're, they're, they work out like tuppence each, and you can use them for varying things. One of them I use is to, to cover my uh, work bit here, um, and it gives me a nice flat surface. And I've got two layers of plastic between that and there. Plus afterwards I can wrap the, the glue uh, in the, the glue blank in there and press against it and it stops glue going over the floor. So it's it's a disposable but you, you can you get like three different uses out of them starting from starting from this. I've got my gloves ready to go. So I'm getting them on there. Try and operate the camera and everything afterwards. Um, obviously don't do one at a time because it's expensive with gloves and glue and all the rest of it. Try and get in a you know get three up together. Uh, so it just makes it efficient as you put the gloves on and that's it. As I said, I use Devcon two tone epoxy. I like this because it's not the most brittle form of epoxy that's going. I've been using this stuff for years and I've never noticed um, too uneven a delivery from the syringe ends. You can put the cap over the end, um, and this has got a 30 minute work time, uh, which is very nice. I mean, the, the rapid one's at five minutes, that means five minutes work in, in three and a half minutes is getting hard to work with. I can't be faff with that. So, I, I, but I get this one, I get a clear one, um, and it, it's, in 15 minutes, you, you, you really can't notice the difference between the working. Uh, motion it starts sort of gently solidifying up after about 15 minutes but you can still work it but it's more than enough to do a batch of ferro rods or three knives with handles uh, but you, you, you're only putting out a little bit of delivery anyway but it just gives you that work time um, I put a li little bit of tape down on there so um, I, I mix up on the tape on the plastic and these are the stirrers you get from um, varying catering sites on the internet in bags of a thousand or as some of you may have noticed costly um, so when you finish mixing up your cappuccino just wipe it off and you keep the other end for using glue hey right, so here we go let's hope this works especially on camera hey uh, as I said the heater's been on it's not as cold as uh, you'd imagine in here uh, but it's going in the house anyway so all these have been degreased and I'm not letting them touch too many other things in the meantime I know the handles that way so when I put the blank on there it's gonna go that way so that's there like that the pins are ready to go all degreased move that move that I take this plastic off because it just gets in the way after that so, and then there's the uh, break off. I always check that it's broke off successfully rather than squidge and then one's not. It was a bit too late by then. You could always drill it out here. And then a nice amount. As I say, just, just putting it out like this, you can tell you've got such a similar volume of each one. will do and then I pull it back to create a negative pressure otherwise the damn thing will just keep delivering and then replace that on the plastic and get your applicator and mix it up really well making sure you've gone to all the edges get each corresponding differing pool of glue mixed in with the other side now if I didn't put this tape down this, this plastic would be rippling up like crazy it just just makes it a little bit more resilient and then what I do like to do is drag from side to side like that a bit like uh, warm chocolate with a palette knife, it just aids to the mixing up. So there it is. Now, 
here we go so on it goes right to the edge Again, the tape is doubled over on an end. You could double take that up by like to let the air come out, and you want to put that so no one's going to trip over it. Kids, dogs, things like that. You want to put it safe. You might want to put it in a box or something. Um, I guess on top of the fridge, nice and warm. Um, but you don't want the cat to jump up and catch the end of the blade. But as I say, it's doubled over. On it. there's, there's my angle in on it now. It's it's reasonably protected, but you need to put it away safe. So thanks for joining me again. Epoxy zone with Wessex blades. There's no glue on my uh, machine, which is always good, a bonus. But uh, I suppose tip of the day is get yourself a workshop mower from Strike Force. Give me mate, a plug. And all that sort of thing. See you in the next one.